The last few years is a critical inflection point in immunotherapy where immunotherapy has now finally, uh, after a century, become established as one of the pillars of cancer treatment. And that change has really occurred through the clinical results related to blockade of these regulatory pathways in the immune system that we call immune checkpoints that by analogy are like the brakes on a car. And by using antibodies against these brakes, uh, we can essentially now empower the patient's own immune system to attack their cancer. And that's now translated into very impressive clinical results in many different cancer types, including very durable responses uh, in which the tumors do not seem to develop resistance. So in melanoma, we heard a while ago about ipilimumab, and now I think things have progressed. There's some other interesting molecules around. Yeah, so the really exciting story uh, over the last uh, year or so has been uh, the results in blocking a different uh, inhibitory or a checkpoint molecule called PD-1. And in contrast, ipilimumab, which uh, blocks CTLA-4, which is a general immune system checkpoint, the PD-1 checkpoint appears to function most specifically and selectively within the tissue and also within the tumor. Tumors seem to have co-opted this particular checkpoint to develop resistance to immune attack. And because this is an intratumoral checkpoint, blocking it seems to generate a much more specific anti-tumor effect. So there's a greater window of response with lower toxicity and greater efficacy. And this is now really opening the door to therapies that alter the immune microenvironment of the tumor. So, so what are the toxic effects of these type of drugs? So um, for both ipilimumab and uh, a number of the antibodies that block the PD-1 pathway, uh, the toxicities are immunologic. So um, we would call those on-target uh, toxicities. And they generally involve inflammation in various tissues. Um, in the case, and it, we still don't understand why, but it can be different tissues uh, in different patients. And the spectrum uh, seems to be different for different uh, antibodies. So ipilimumab, the major toxicities are in the colon, uh, causing colitis, inflammation of the colon. Uh, and that's reasonably common. Whereas that's very uncommon with anti-PD-1, the more common uh, toxicity, although it's still only about uh, roughly 3% of patients, but uh, is, is in the lungs, which uh, is certainly something that we worry a lot about. But it's mostly immunologic, and we think that it comes from subclinical inflammatory processes that are going on in these various tissues, which are unleashed when we block those breaks. So, um so for, the, for do all patients respond to this type of therapy, or is, is, it, a, is it a targeted therapy? Um, so not all patients respond um, to these therapies. We wish they did, but that's, it's not that simple. Um, and we're still now just understanding uh, why some patients respond and some patients don't respond. And uh, we're trying to understand more about biomarkers that can predict. Uh, what's come out of the PD-1 story um, is that if a patient's tumor 
expresses uh, the major ligand or partner for PD-1 in their tumor, uh, which is called PD-L1, that patient has a much higher likelihood of responding to an antibody blocking that pathway. It's not as clean as the case with the mutations in oncogenes that are being targeted because these are not genetically driven overexpression. Uh, this is really due to a manifestation of the dynamic interaction between the immune microenvironment and the tumor. So expressing PDL1 is in part a marker that there is an active ongoing immune response that can't go, get through to kill that tumor. Uh, and so blocking that pathway will have a higher probability of generating a response, but it's not yet at the level where we would make clinical decisions. So what else is on the horizon in, in immunotherapy? So many things are on the horizon. We think that the successes that we've seen over the last couple of years represent less than 5% of the opportunity that immunotherapy is going to provide us over the next 20 years. And I think those can be broken into three areas. One is uh, combinations of multiple immunomodulatory antibodies taking advantage of the fact that it's not just one inhibitory pathway, but oftentimes multiple inhibitory pathways that are co-expressed. So if you block two at a time, maybe even more, then there can be synergy because you can get multiple inhibitory pathways. So that's one thing. The second uh, is going to be combination with cancer vaccines. We now understand that a lot of the reason that cancer vaccines have failed in the past, even though they could generate anti-cancer immune responses, is that those immune responses were blocked when they actually got into the tumor by these very inhibitory pathways that we're blocking. And so we have evidence in animal models and the clinical trials are just starting that combining vaccines with these antibodies that block checkpoints will be very valuable. And the third thing is going to be combining these immunotherapies with other therapies which were not developed with the immune system in mind, such as some of the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, but that nonetheless have very important effects on immune responses that in induce immune responses. So those are additional combinations that integrate conventionally non-immunologic therapies with immune therapies into combinatorial approaches. So the traditional immunotherapies such as the interleukins, do you see a future for them? I personally believe that giving interleukins systemically is going to have limited long-term value. And I think the reason is straightforward. Normally, the normal biology of interleukins is that they are meant to work locally within a few cell diameters. And when you give interleukins systemically like a drug, that completely breaks this fundamental physiologic principle of specificity. So you can activate immune responses, but they're activated all over the body. And so you lose your specificity, you lose your therapeutic window. So while I think interleukins and understanding interleukin production locally within the tumor is very important, using interleukins as they have been used conventionally as systemic drugs is ultimately something that is going to be relegated to history and will not be a major part of the future of cancer therapy.